in the absence of truth, people will make up a lie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so if you don't, and if I don't give you something, then you'll just make up something. Oh. And then you ain't gonna say nothing. So and then like, I'm just gonna let it ride, and just I'm gonna see how far it's gonna go, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna see who's gonna join in, yeah. and then I'm gonna watch and see who my people are. Yeah. So a lot of times, man, sometimes it's best to be quiet. Don't fight all of that stuff, man. Let it bubble, and then you'll see what comes up to the top. If you alive, subscribe. I always ask y'all for a favor. I know y'all get. I ain't boosted, but I do ask for some stuff. I know y'all get tired of me, but I want y'all to, I want you to subscribe to my channel. You know, uh, that's just a sign of support of what we do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think it costs, it don't cost nothing. Just push that subscribe button and and just like it, you know, like it and share it and, pe- and let people know, let people know what your people are doing. You know, I thought about something. I got a special guest today and I'm finna introduce him in a minute, but I thought about something. I don't want everybody to win. Uh, uh, that's a lie if I say I want everybody to win. I want the good people to win. I don't want the people to win that talk behind your back. I don't want the people to win that that use their wins to big up on you and make you feel small. Uh, I don't want the people to win to try to, to try to say something about you, to knock you down, to make you feel small, to make them feel big. I don't want that type. I, I, want, the, uh, I want the godly people to win. I want the people that want other people to win. And so, yeah, I know everybody say, I want everybody to win. Now, that ain't me. But today, I got a special guest. Uh, it's a blessing and an honor when you can reach out to people in your town that's of a caliber and got a lot going on. And, and they tell you yes. They don't give you the shuck or the run around. They don't lie to you. And, and this one right here is special. So a uh, shout out to Kenny Smooth. What's going on? What's up, man? How I'm you doing? Here. How you doing? How you doing? I finally got up in here, man. Man, Kenny Smooth, can you just take a t- second to explain to people who you are and what you do? Uh, name is Kenny Smooth. I am uh, vice president of uh, Cumulus Urban Radio Formats, uh, program director here at 92Q. Uh, and I am the uh, morning show host for the Kenny Smooth Morning Show here in Nashville. Uh, how many stations do you uh, run? Uh, 40. 40? Yeah. How hard of a job is that? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's an insane uh, it's an insane job. I love it so much. And you know, I mean, before I even get started, to okay. let y'all know, I'm here as Kenny Smooth on my own volition. I'm not here to represent Cumulus Media, ninety two Q or anything like that. I'm here because I, I want to talk with you uh, on cool. your channel. I, you, I have to say that because I appreciate it of all of the legal stuff, you know, and, and because of all the hats I wear. Most definitely, uh, you got to make sure that you uh, you're clear about that. So we clear. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, forty stations, man. Ninety two Q is my 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 uh, my station. That my home station, the one that helped me grow as yeah. a programmer and a talent, and 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 put me in the spotlight to where I can get a chance to do uh, these amazing things, man. And so shout out to uh, to Brian Phillips and uh, John Demick and Allison Warren who who are, who are instrumental in making that happen for me. Shout out to uh like and Charlie said, Cook too, yeah, man. That's Charlie what's Cook. up. That's what we go. We gonna shout out some names today. And uh, man, I, first I wanna I wanna thank you for being a service to the Nashville community. Thank you for saying that. You know I what I'm saying? It. And um, I don't think some of you guys get enough. I always use this analogy. Um, I can do 99 things right, mm-hmm. and nobody will say nothing. But they'll be like, okay, you did. But you can do one thing wrong, and not even one thing wrong. You can do one thing disagreeable, right? And you're a bad person, right? Yep. And that's just the that's just the times we live in. And I I thought about, and I didn't, and and, and I, I I cause I'm a I'm a godly person, kid. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I try to tell everybody first, I'm God first. Absolutely. Uh, past podcasts, past friendships, past anything, I'm God first. And um, and I I was going back and forth to to say this, but I want to tell you this. The other day, I called a friend of mine. And um, he's a he's a friend of yours. It's, it it is what it is. And I said, um, this is what I said. And I'm talking about. I see Dub. I see. I said Dub. I said God told me to call you and tell you that you took 92 crew for granted. Oh wow. I mean, and that's why I can see. I can talk. You know what I'm saying? I can talk because I'm just me. I'm honest. Like I ain't. I understand. Ain't nobody did nothing wrong. Right. And um, he said, why you say that? 
I said, because 92Q opened up so many doors for you. And I said, you was more worried about the people than the presidents. Uh. And so that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, some people be so worried about what they think other people should be doing or how, how things are supposed to be going when they don't even realize the presence that, that they in and, and, and they withhold, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And so, um, you know, we, 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 we fans of you guys, like we really look at you guys like family. And so how's the relationship with you and dub now? Have you guys talked to, because I know it's like, you know what I mean? I know y'all, he really look up to you. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and I would say, man, to, uh, push back a little bit, man. He, um, dub, dub, uh, was, was, Amazing at the station when he was there. Uh, and, um, you know, I think uh, he he took his opportunities to do his thing. He developed, he learned. He was under my tutelage for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and, and learned and stuff. And so we got as much from C Dub as C Dub got from us. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Um, we really did, man. He's, uh, he's an honorable cat. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, you know, and, and, and so we talk every once in a while. But you know, it's not it's not gonna be as, as it was when he was at the station because we had to have a lot of engagements. Yeah, yeah. And we're doing this and we're doing that. Um, but Dub know I know that I can call him at any yeah. moment. Yeah. And he knows he can call me at any moment. Oh, if he yeah. ever needs me, he knows I'm in the car, boom, I'm gone. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm where you at. Most definitely. Uh and the same thing uh for him, man. He's just you know, he's a young cat that just wanna go out here and give it a shot, man. And so I applaud that. Have a I wanna ask you a question. Uh, you old school, right. and I am too. Have a group ever broke up, and you was like, "I ain't want to break." You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, have yeah. that ever happened to you? You mean like you mean? Yeah, uh, it could prefer- be an iconic. It could be. It could be a, yeah, a yeah. Singing group. I, I, I you will know what I'm say, saying? man, it was probably. Uh, Give me a, a group lady. that done broke up that you would know that that you was like, "Why they three three LW?" You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think they were right on the cusp, and 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 it's and it's personal and professional because. And Tori Norton is like my little sister. Uh-huh. Me and her brother are best friends from the second grade. Like, so when you talk, if you say her my name to her, she's going to be like, it's big bro. Yeah. You know, because we all help her grow up. We, uh, we used to have a little singing group, me and her brother and a couple other of our friends, and she would be in the corner singing while we were singing. Mm-hmm. She was always a little, you know, she was three years old, and she could sing then. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and so to see her and then maturate, uh, and then get in that group and then all of the nonsense that was going on inside the group uh, and cause it to break up. But I thought that that would have been a, an SWV TLC and, level and, group. And yeah. why I say that is this, I was, I was explaining to Dub, like, and this is not no, they be taking, this is not no beef, but this is just, they are solid. Right. But I was explaining to Dub, I say, man, uh, y'all like the group that I, they broke up that I missed. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right. so you can't, so I was telling Dub, I said, I said, you can't knock me for how I feel about, Mm-mm. you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's, that's just your me. truth. That's just, that's just my truth. But like I said, I just want to, um, I'm always going to uplift y'all. I'm always going to support y'all. Right. But I want, and I want to ask you this question. What's, uh, what's the vision of people coming to work for the radio station? If they're working up under Kenny Smooth, like, you know, some that the, the people on the outside we don't understand. Like, if I'm coming to work for Kenny Smooth, like, am I trying to move up or get my own show? Or like, what's the vision? Um, the 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 vision, man, is is for you to grow. You okay. know, um, the vision is for you to to learn as much as you can about the industry and while you're doing that, be instrumental in the places where I need you to be. Okay. So you know you. You kind of do. It's a dual thing. Right, yeah. You you working on the things that we need to have happen at the station, mm-hmm. and then you're feeding yourself. You know. So one of my one of my sayings is, you get to where you want to be by helping other people get where they want to be. be. Yeah. So if you're doing that, it's always going to be a dual situation. I'm doing. You know. Uh, I might be here being a producer or an associate producer, and I'm doing uh, social media and yeah. what have you. Know? And then at the same time, I want to be my own star and I want to have my own show and platforms or whatever. I'm going to, as I see you feed that, I'm going to definitely help you feed the other side because I know that when I was a young cat in this business, people weren't doing that. They just wanted me to do the thing that fed the station. And they knew that I had aspirations and visions and dreams, but they really wasn't trying to help me do that. So they know that I'll, you know, I'll pour into that. I'll have you do your thing. I'll let you, you know, maturate into the spaces you want to go to. And um, and it works out. It works out. But eventually, I do know that at some point, I'll lose that person. Yeah, but I'm supposed to. 
Yeah. It's a nest. You're supposed to fly. Everybody grow. And somebody yeah, yeah, fly yeah, to the yeah, nest. Yeah, yeah. And I'll sit back and be like, got another one out there, bring a new one in. And so look, so uh and, and not to even back backtrack on that, but yeah. when I when I said what I said to Doug, he just got it. He was like, dang, I never even looked at it like that. Right. And that's why I was, I was and, and I'd say that about life, like, just because I move on, that don't mean that. It's nothing wrong. It's just it's growth. You know what I'm saying? It's time to but move on. Another another thank you I want to I want to give you because I just thought about it when you said something about social media. Right. When you got held that job, it's just that's what, like it's 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 certain stuff that I look at. You know what I'm saying? I mm-hmm. know that girl. Rest in peace, help. Yeah, man. I know she worked so hard in this entertainment industry, mm-hmm. and for you to do what you did for her. Like it just said another, it said another A plus for Kenny. You know what I'm saying? So, right. um, what made you give Heather the chance? You know, just watching her do it, man. You know, I've seen her grind. I've seen how she, um, you know, I like working with good people. Okay, you know what I'm saying? If you got, if, you know, you look around. I usually I, I always have some solid people around me. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? And um, Heather is talented, and she just, you know, uh, I think the biggest compliment I can give anybody is if I say you get it. Mm-hmm. If I say you get it, that's the biggest probably compliment that I can give you, because most people don't damn get it. You know, they only get the parts. Yeah, they don't get the whole. And she she got it, man. And when she was coming in there, man, in the station, and she started getting into her groove, and we were man, we was about to do some hella yeah, stuff, bro. I'm, yeah. And that man, that hurt me so bad. Not only not only because her as a per, losing her as a person. But because of the things that we didn't get to see her do, yeah, the yeah, things exactly. that I was gonna put on to her, yeah, and and when her that, that light was big, hit that her, was a big deal. In the big she was about I to, to get to it, man, yeah. and to not see that happen for her, man, really hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Ken, I'm and I and I'm gonna tell you something funny. Like this, this just something funny about Kenny. That uh, first you got here in Nashville in what year? Oh five. And I want to ask you this. This is a funny question. I want to ask mm-hmm. you. Did you have two girlfriends when you got here? <laughs> uh-uh. Okay. See, no, Kenny, man. They be like, people, oh, man. They be, when I first got here, man, when you, yeah. people were like, man, was saying like, all Kenny. kinds of stuff. Yeah. But here's the thing with me, man. You know, you don't, you know, really hear my name in these scandals or anything like never. that. Man. I never heard one in that because I just, I just keep it a buck, you know. And um, but in the absence of truth, people will make up a lie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so if you don't, and if I don't give you something. Then you'll just make up something, um, and then you ain't gonna say nothing. So and then like, I'm just gonna let it ride, and just I'm gonna see how far it's gonna go, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna see who's gonna join in, yeah. and then I'm gonna watch and see who my people are. Yeah. So a lot of times, man, sometimes it's best to be quiet. Don't fight all of that stuff, man. Let it bubble, and then you'll see what comes up to the top. You like, okay, well now I see that you like to, you know, uh, you know, join in on the bullshit. Yeah. See, I can't deal we with wipe you, you out. I'm going to put you over here. Yeah. Heisman Trophy, you over there. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, yeah. uh, and then I see that some people are defending me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like, I love when, you know, uh, you know, the people say that you're, you're a brand. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Yeah. That's your brand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so when people defend you, you know, you know, you've done something well. How did you know who to who to uh, mess with and kind of pick through when you first got here? Because what you need and staff and uh, did you come here straight for the radio? I came here only for that. Okay. The only reason I came here, I was in a I was in another cumulus market in Myrtle Beach, and man, I tell you, I fought not to come to Nashville because I was on the beach, bro. I was in I was in Myrtle Beach. I mean, I had a condo. You open my windows, I can look and see the Atlantic Ocean every morning. Man, I was living the dream. So what makes you in in that that and we know you can get a job anyway. What right. makes you stay here? Man, you know, um Nashville, you know, I was a man when I came here, but Nashville made me a grown man. Okay. You know, um my my church relationship in Mount Zion, shouts out Bishop Walker. Uh, my dog, Bishop and, Walker. And, and um and uh you know, I went to tell you a story real quick. Oh. I was, uh, I met this woman. I was living in Bellevue at the time. Okay. So it's this really big uh, car wash out there. And she came on, she was in the car wash and she had on like these little short shorts and some heels and she was washing the car. It was like a movie. 
You know what I'm saying? She was bad. Miss <laughs> Parker. So, yeah, Miss Parker looking. You know what I'm saying? So I might go over there and shoot my little shotty right. shot, you know? And um, she was like, you got to come to church with me. That's what she said. She said, we can go up, we can go on a date, but you got to come to church mm-hmm. with me first. So it was Saturday. The next day was church day. Man, I went to church. I'm in here trying to seal a deal, really. I shouldn't even yeah. been in the church. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm in church doing that. I'm trying to, to get honest. this woman. God, no. And man, next day, boy, the church service out, I'm down at the altar walking in the back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to get become a member of the church. <laughs> it just hit me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And me and her, we still cool. Never dated. After that, you know, we uh, we like, she's like my little sister now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and that's how I got to Mount Zion. And then I was going through a lot of uh, stuff with my daughter at the time and my ex-wife and and all of that stuff matured me, and I saw it. I was like, that's what you wanted me to come here for, God. That's what. That's why I needed to come here. And then things just kept piling on top of that, uh, other reasons, and was like, you're supposed to be here. Yeah. You know, and so, um, you know, I said, you know, build your, you know, you know, get your tree by the water, yeah. you know, in the Bible. And so it was like, if you, you'll get fed, that way. So most people that get in my position to become a vice president of the four mess, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm, I mean, I'm in the, in the league with a very few people. There's only maybe four of us in the whole world. You know what I'm saying? And, um, to get that kind of position for urban music, anyway, it's a bunch yeah. of VPs, but I'm talking about for urban mm-hmm. formats. Um, you normally have to go to DC, Chicago, New York, and then get those positions and then get this big resume. And then they'll look at you and say, okay, well you can run all of it. Mm-hmm. But God was like, I'll bring Chicago, New York, and D.C. to you if you stay Ooh. in Nashville. Ooh. So I didn't move. Yeah. And it, <laughs> and it came to me. Okay. And so let, let me uh, ask you this, Kenny. With the influence that you have, um, 92Q, I heard the ratings of 92Q are more than the ratings of 101, and 101 is a bigger station, right? Bigger like signal, yeah. It has okay, a big so signal. with you, like, okay, you got 10 friends, you got five friends over here, you got five friends over here. Right. You, you got five Republicans, you got five Democrats. Right. And so now, when Kenny Smooth is representing for the Democrats, and you and you got your people over here, and how, how do you deal with that? Like, with the backlash of, I'm going here, but I'm trying, you're trying to appease to everybody because you do have a voice. Uh, You mean, it's like, you, are you speaking Apart- specific? Well, just, specifically, just saying, yeah, specifically in politics, just radio station, like you know, you gonna have your 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 backlash on like maybe what you believe in. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying, how do you keep it strong to where like you gotta you can deal with the backlash? I, yeah, I mean, it's like I think the truth just keeps you solid, man. I, I just speak my truth. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I don't dance around it. I don't shortcut it. Um, and I, I'm respectful with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat you down with my truth. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's why I'm yeah. just. I'm not gonna do that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. Uh, and but I'm saying if you if, if you come out publicly and say I'm a Democrat, that that's that's a lot. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And not. I mean, you. I'm. You would. It ain't nothing wrong with it. Right, but you know right. what I'm saying. So, but you. But that's because now it's like I'm. I'm encouraging other people to be a Democrat right. because I'm on the radio. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, um, like I tell people all the time, man. It's uh, black people have only been voting in this country for 50 years plus, maybe not even 60 really. Yeah. I'm saying if you look at the actual numbers, the Civil Rights Acts, the Voting Acts came out six, about 60 years ago. Yeah. And so, it, you know, you, you start doing the math, maybe take you about 10 to 15 maybe years to, to understand the process yeah. and what the impact is and then learn and then teach another generation. Man, we're talking maybe 40 years total that we've been actually voting with some knowledge and understanding. That's an infant. Yeah. When you look at how much long voting has been in the democratic process in this country. So we still learning yeah, okay. how to vote, oh. Ooh. what the impact of voting, okay. you know what I'm saying? And so while all of that is going on, you got all these different factors coming in, trying to deter you from voting, okay. trying to limit the voting, you know? So it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of things that are happening in the process with that. And so what I do is just speak my truth and, uh, I tell people all the time, man. I'm not, I'm not really Democrat or Republican. Okay, okay. but I, I will work with either side that's going to feed my community. Is there something I, wrong? You know, okay, so, so Kenny, because we just, I, I like you. I, I always like Kenny. Anyway, um, is there something wrong with 
just going in there voting all Democrat and not checking on who we voting on. That's that again. I, I say, man, that's really you gonna leave, you gonna live your truth. If you believe that the Democrat way is the only way to go, then make your line vote. You know what I'm okay. saying? Make your if that's the way that you believe in your heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't I think education wise. But if you we educated, kinda, you know, you probably should, should look at it and say, okay, what's what's it for me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, and that's the only way I really think you should look at it. What's what, not necessarily what's in it for you, because I think uh, we get a little selfish with voting. People think voting is like going to the damn ATM machine. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's the ATM machine that doesn't punch out for 40 years. Okay. You punch the numbers in, but you stand there for like 40 years before the money, the results of your vote actually comes out. Okay. It's The vote is not for you. It's for your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. The vote is Ooh, not really for you. Okay. It's for your See, children. We, we we don't have enough people explaining it they, like they that, don't understand it. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody and so everybody gets so caught up, you know, in, in that in that dumb ass fourteen hundred dollar check that, that was under Trump. Okay. Who caused the fourteen hundred dollar check to be needed in the first damn place? You know what I'm saying? And then you took the money. And all you did was take money from yourself on the back end. You didn't get money. You just took money from yourself later that you can't get now. So it's like it's this real shell game thing. And so you, but now when that happened, people think that I vote and I get fourteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not how it works. You don't get. You don't just necessarily get something. You know what I'm saying? And if uh and if there is something to get, you know, uh tax cut here and there, that's cool. But people really don't understand. We don't we are still learning how to vote, is my point. And we're learning the process of voting and what happens, but it's not necessarily a vote for right now as much as it is for you to invest in your future. Yeah. You know. So so let me ask you a question question, Kenny, because uh yeah, you are you 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 good on this on this subject. And not ask them about your voting history. Mm -hmm. But have you voted different on apparent years? Like maybe with a Republican this year, like yeah. well, okay. Yeah. I've, I've it's, done that it's, it's not a lot of people that I have never met, Kenny, that 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 Because as I matured in learning okay. and have, you know, people that mentor me, you know, and be like, yo, I, this person some people man are Democrats and they suck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm not going to vote for you. I think you're a bad person. person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you should not lead if you're a bad person. person. If your character is flawed, you can't lead because you're going to make character flawed decisions down the road. That's just going to, if you a thief, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you, you can be good at everything else, but you a thief. Okay. And I know you've been it's a over. thief. It's over. And so you be like, yeah, man, but you know, that's my man. I'm going to vote for him. When they can convict him for embezzling money from the government, you knew that he was a thief when you voted for him. I don't care how shiny and dancing and everything that he does, you know, all the other things. Yeah. At the core of him is a thief. And, that ain't, and at the ain't core good. of them is an adulterer. And at the core of them is whatever it is, that is what's going to come out when you boil it all down. And you have to be cognizant of that. So, and I'm saying people don't deserve a second chance, but when you give them that second chance and they do it, you go, That's, I knew it. That was me. I did that. I did that. Eat it. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to eat it. What's the, what's the most uh, misconception about the radio station and how it runs when it comes to playing music? Um, I think people think that they go into the box. Uh, that's the studio. Okay. They go into the box and turn on FL and, and get them some traps going okay. on, some trap beats, and spit that fire in the mic, okay. and then walk it up to me. <laughs> that's not how it works, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's all. And but then, we thought that's how it worked. You know what? And then, you know, man, um, thank God. The technology, man, is so good and so bad at the same time. Like, you know, I got my iPad Pro right here, man. Okay. I can literally mix master a song right now with just this. It's more computing power on this thing. Back when I used to be on my uh, MPC and all that back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. when I was you know, I was trying to do my little production thing okay. back in, the, in my you know, early days, it's more computing in this than in the whole studio yeah. back in the day. Mm -hmm. It's like, seriously. Yeah. You can do everything on here. And so just because the pro but the crazy part about that is just because the process to make the music is easier doesn't make the music better. Actually, it's starting to make it worse. worse. It's Ooh. making it worse because you don't have. To. Imagine if you all you had to do, right, to to work out and get slim and get get right, 
is 20 push-ups every day. That's all you had to do. But and then you get up, you're like, oh, my muscles coming in. You know, oh, I'm swole up. Cause, but you, all you did was 20 push-ups. There's, a, there's something going on inside of you that's like, you look like you got the muscles, but there's some bad stuff going on on the inside. Yeah. And that's what our music, man, our music's got bad stuff on the inside. Okay. But I think, you know, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but, but the process of that, man, is the other side of that is the delivery systems, the way that you can get m- music to market. All of that stuff is simple now. Yeah. The whole it ain't reason, like it used to be. It ain't like it used to okay. be. The whole point of you getting on the radio back in the day was to get fans mm-hmm. so that people would hear your music and become a fan of your music and go buy your music. Most definitely. I, dude, you can do that with just this iPad. Right. Yeah. You yeah. can take the song, record it, get, get your Spotify account, Why do you get think your YouTube people account. Get to the radio so bad. Because bands, let, me, let me tell you something. The, okay. But the radio. Is the megaphone and okay. and in the current environment in 2024, the radio is the megaphone. Mm-hmm. Like you can make this song, get on Spotify, you know, get some fans, even do a little small little tour, do 100, 150 uh, seat rooms. Mm-hmm. You do that, yeah. But if you want to get to the Bridgestone, you gotta have a radio because mm-hmm. the radio makes you a superstar. Star. Facts, yeah. The radio makes you a superstar. Star. Spotify. Just makes you a mini star. Yeah, and you can get do anybody can get on. Anybody it. can do it. Everybody okay. can't just get on the radio. Mm-hmm. That's so true. anybody can get a YouTube account. Anybody can get a Spotify account. Take their song, put it on there. Oh man, I got a million people checking out my song. I know a lot of Spotify artists with a million people playing their song, and that's, that's good. That's broke as hell. They ain't no money. Mm. And they don't they don't know how to monetize it either. That mm. or uh, they just haven't had enough of a megaphone. Okay. And so you want to brew out of the pack and come into this other space, and that's what radio will do for you. It's the megaphone. And so I'm just saying, but how hard uh, when it's when it's are you happen to go, straight go through companies to get on the radio, or are, are guys like you and DJs saying, "Hey, we need to be playing this guy." We it's you know it's it's uh it's really man. I, I look at the hustle. If yeah. I see somebody like, and we just started a new show. With Ebene, um, uh, called R and B Vibes, mm-hmm. and so it's another place where we can take some up and coming regional acts and things like that, and give them some space to mature. You yeah. know, um, so we do have that. But yeah, we're constantly looking, man. Sean Good is my assistant PD. Is Hill. really good at um, getting into. He still loves the music. He's real good at um, loves it. contact. Yeah, when I contact him on whatever I needed to a couple of times. It was like, boom. Boom, boom, boom. He's real good on, on, on that. I kind of love that. Let me ask sure. you a question, Kenny. What made people say, hey, we're going to put Kenny Smooth in position. He's, we're going to make him the boss. What you think? Um, some track record. You know, things, you know, especially coming here to Nashville, I had a record of just going into stations, man, and, and making them winners. And that's that's what people want. You know, when people are looking at Head, when they looked at the head coach, new head coach for Alabama, they just didn't go get anybody. Yeah, <laughs> they bought the dude that was just in the championship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, so they go. We we looking for a winner. So they look for a winner in me. Uh, and then they knew. Um, with me, I'm a true Aquarian man, and that's an old saying about Aquarians, is that we're a doer of all things well and master of none, because I don't zoom in on one thing. I know how to do everything. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so I can coach you. And social media. I can coach you on the air. I can coach you in DJing. I can DJ too. You know what I'm saying? I can go to the club and burn it down. So you sad about sensation. I want to cry right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just do that. You know what I'm saying? So we go and I just will, uh, and it makes me, makes me able to do a lot of different things. And they wanted somebody that can do a lot of different things. So that was my call. Uh, Kwani, I always hold you to the highest stack. Kwani Cash. Uh, shout out to Q. But um, I'm going to tell you who, like, I just think, I think this person is your biggest person, uh, your biggest fan. I think she supports everything you do. She's a ride or die, Sissy Brown. Yeah, man. Yep. And Sissy, Sissy, man, we connected, man, because she wanted to do this. And I will say, man, I, I don't make it easy on you if you like, hey man, you shouldn't. I want I want to be on the radio. Okay. I said, send me some stuff. You know, and so one thing I'm trying to see is uh, your intelligence. Okay. 
what I'm saying, you know, two kind of people can't work with me. Lazy people, and stupid people. Facts. I have no time for lazy and stupid. You, Period. I just can't. I don't have no time for it. I need I need hustlers, soldiers. Those are the, if anybody is up in that in that box with me, anybody around me, anybody you've ever seen work for me, they are either soldiers or hustlers. Yeah. They 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 go get it. They go get to it. And they are mission focused. You know what I'm saying? And they know how to do it. And so Sissy Brown, man, just she just never gave up. Like she kept at it, kept at it. She would see me at the club, you know, and then um She's very consistent. Yeah, as she, I see. She's solid, man. She going she's just gonna keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't push her down, she's just gonna get back up. What's the myth about radio stations not hiring local Nashville people? It's no myth. You know what I'm saying? It's I'll be honest with you. I mean, I've been here almost 20 years, but I may have had two or three people locally. And then the people that were local, they weren't from here, like Sissy. Yeah. She's local. I mean, yeah. you can call her that's local. What I'm, saying. I'm just saying, saying, like, the people that's born and raised, is it is it that nobody here wants to do it? Or do you have to go to school to do radio? Or? They haven't. They, you know, for me, they just they haven't come to me. Okay. Well, no, I, I don't even know if nobody... That's Want the to bottom get in line. It, you know what I mean? I'm just, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I just never really seen like every the radio stations. If you see them, they're always nobody's from Nashville. Nobody's you know from what I'm Nashville. Saying? And that's that's. But if you but to be fair, if you go to you know uh, Dallas, Charlemagne ain't from there. Charlemagne uh, ain't from uh, New York. Uh, Angela, yeah, yeah. Okay. Angela Yee <laughs> ain't from you know what I'm saying yeah. from the place where she's from. Badly got DJ Emmy, but, right. but he's from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like us, we got Wiz. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wiz from here. My you know what I'm saying? You got Dub. Dub from here. Max. You know what I'm Max. saying? So it's, it's when they come. Yes, let's do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But if you, but I'm not looking for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and neither is Kroger when you want to get some groceries. Groceries, <laughs> the, Kroger not coming to your house. <laughs> hey, man, you got milk in there? <laughs> you got, you know what I'm saying? They, no. Yeah. You go to Kroger, they got the milk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you, you know where the milk is you if know, you want it. You know where the boss is. Come to the boss. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to do it, I am. I do. I don't have all the ideas. I don't know everything. And I'm looking for somebody with the million dollar idea every day. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm oh, looking yeah. for every day, scouting. Who got the next idea? Who got the next gift that we need to bring in on the team? You know, and I, I know it when I see it, and I know it when I hear it, and I'm, I'm like, no, let's go right now. You know? The doors are always open in the studio for the locals of Nashville. Doors are open. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen a radio station, period, point blank, that they are always – I don't care if they're doing food, I don't care if they're uh, building a business. I don't care if it's a phone call. So um, who idea was that to let those locals do what they do? That was that was definitely the, uh, I'm going to say a group effort, but that's definitely my mindset about a radio station. Yeah. Um, like when we do Local Love and we do that, that on our show, man, we've had so many different types of people oh, and man. businesses and organizations and um and uh, you know it was it's def- it's I think you have to you have to have that okay on every station man it's it's because you start to lose the essence of it and then now you just Spotify now you just Pandora you know what I'm saying but when you turn to this station you're gonna hear us talking UCJC yeah. you're gonna hear us talking Dodge City you're gonna hear us yeah. talking about the yeah. neighborhoods mm-hmm. and the people in those neighborhoods and the Clemmy Greenleys and and the people that are doing stuff, you know, my girl Rashida Patuga, you're going to hear us bringing these people's names up because that's Nashville. Yeah. And I think that's the uh, the beauty of a radio station, man. That's what I love about going on a radio station and turn on Baltimore when I'm in Baltimore. I'm turning on the station when I'm in Philly. Am I going to get Philly? Why did they, let me ask you a question. Uh, why did they discontinue the Tom John Morning Show? He was just, man, it was just his time. You know what I'm saying? He was, he had done it for so many years. And a lot of times just people like, you know, I'm done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think Tom, and that at the same time, though, I think Tom may have wanted to do a few more years. But I think the company was like, nah, Tom, you know, we kind of in a bad spot. You know what I'm saying? And we want to kind of turn the page and. Yeah. And give Ricky a shot, you know, yeah, and, you know, yeah. to come in here and get do his thing. Um, I thought Tom, I thought, and I tried to convince him to hit him a couple of times. I thought he would have been so dope 
in the podcast space. Mm. If he had started it right when he left there, time to join this podcast would be monstrous right now. But he just didn't, you know, he OG, you know what I'm saying? He not, he want to do it the way he want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't want to do the podcast, but dude, the Time Journal Morning Show podcast would be a beast. It would be, it would be a right super beast now. Right, I'm talking about he'll come in and be beast. And let me ask you something because, um, I, you know, I, I listen to the show. And how did the decision come up to do the Kenny Smooth Morning Show? When I'll be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't ask for it. Okay, you know what that, that, that's what I want. That's what I want to know <laughs> at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, all right, well, which you should have, but you didn't. Right? Okay, I didn't. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, at the time, the, the boss we call him, you know, do this mob thing. We call him the boss of bosses, right? Mm -hmm. Boss of bosses is the person that runs all the programming. All the programmers fall under one person. He's called the content director. He's like he's in charge of all the PDs. Mm -hmm. And so the boss of bosses at the time was Mike McVeigh. And um, I had done Billboard Awards for him, you know, American Music Awards, a bunch of different things, uh, ran some radio stations on the side. Uh, and so he was like, he had a meeting and called me in. He was in Nashville in a meeting with my boss, who's Allison Warren, and was like, man, we think you should do it. And I'm like, excuse me? What? And, I, and honestly, I was like, I, let me think about it because I'm like, I know me. Yeah. Like, I don't do anything half-assed. So you didn't give a straight? No, not right that day. No. Okay. Um, we, had, You know, a few days and then came back and was like, all right, we'll do it. Because I was like, can I have this, this, and this yeah. to do it? Because I don't want to do no one-man show. Mm -hmm. um, can I have the, these people? And they were like, yeah. So, you know, Sissy Brown was one of those people because we were doing the Kenny and Sissy show on the podcast. And I told him, man, I said, man, see how God worked? We weren't even thinking about this, but we were doing the the podcast, and they saw it. Mm. Again, we were just talking you know about that, about, about when you're rapping and stuff. Yeah. If I see it. Like, I see it. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. They got something there. That might work into something. And so we were already doing it. Dub was the producer already. Yeah. So it was just take it from here and just put it over there. <laughs> That's all we had to do. So we And then so then I had to kind of boot camp them a little bit, man, on the radio side of doing it because it wasn't going to be the same thing. And the discipline about getting up in the morning, man. So I had them getting up, man, all these weird times. Yeah. They hated it. But I'm like, dude, it's you got to get used to it. You know what I'm saying? It's not just going to happen, you know? What's wrong? I want I want to ask you a question. What's wrong with if I hire you and I need you to do it a certain way, that's how I need you to do it? <laughs> nothing. Nothing wrong with it. I, I say I would always tell anybody that's a leader or whatever, you know, you got to have your – stakes in the ground yeah that you got these this has to be done like this um but never turn off the uh the 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 sound of your your subordinates voices man like hear them out because sometimes they might be saving you from wrecking out mm. they may have they may be telling you that one idea especially for me for young people you know i tell in. i always tell young man oh geez man listen to these young people man they got great ideas they see it differently than you do and you can't see it the way they see it because you don't live in that in their space. Right. Yeah, you don't live in their space. You know what I'm saying? And they have watched your space. That's why they want to work with you. So they've seen you do it in your space. Yeah, but you have not lived in theirs, and so they may be telling you an idea, something that when you go, "Oh man, yeah, let's do that," you know. So don't turn their voices off, man. But but definitely have your stakes in the ground. I have mine. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do news here. We're gonna do this here. Blah blah blah, but then sometimes we've moved things around, we've changed it. Um, it's definitely not the show that we put on five years ago. What um what keeps Kenny Smooth grounded on the show and everything? What you got going on? Plus, try, and plus, I want and it's a two part question, mm -hmm. but uh, you also got got to kind of appeal to people and appease to people. So how do you separate that? Yeah, it's 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 a it's a weird thing, man. Because honestly. My my actual personality, man, is just real. Like, I'm very mm. calm. Like, yeah. so anybody who knows a woman in my life is C, uh, C. J. Walton, oh, C. comedian. I saw her do a uh, uh, comedy uh, she set. Was I saw her do comedy down at Soho, right? The, the big Soho, not the yeah, little Soho, not the, little the big Soho. Soho. Yeah, <laughs> we won't get that straight. The Soho, <laughs> you gotta have a membership to get in. I love. I'm gonna tell you, um, 
Thank you, CJ, for uh, teaching my daughter. She was up. So she, she, she's a teacher. And yes. She, she was teaching uh, my daughter's class. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, she I does that too. Shout out to CJ. And yeah, man. Shout out to the women that's actually holding the men down with a hard job mm -hmm. like Kenny Smooth. Mm. And just be honest, Kenny, how does she kind of deal with you in the. True, man. It's like, <laughs> like I said, man, she. um. She's the she's the the firecracker man in okay. this relationship. Like yeah. we go out like when I don't have if it's not like when we go around our friends, mm -hmm. they know I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna get my drink. I'm gonna get my plate. I'm gonna sit down, be out the way. And if you need me to do something, I'm gonna jump up, or whatever. But but I'm not gonna be on. Okay, I'm not gonna be Kenny Smooth when I get there. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not gonna be jumping around making I'm Kenny jokes. Smooth on the radio. It's, I'm gonna be that's kind of like you got a Charleston White kind of. I'm Kenny Smooth on the radio here. I'm chill. Okay, turn it off and on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got some people like my God, this is my boy Tommy Davidson. Don't know how to turn it off. Okay, Tommy Davidson's yeah. always on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always on. I'm like, but I come in and I do that. So that's kind of so it's, it's it's a little bit of a, a difficulty. Um. Because, you know, I know people want that aspect, you know, when you get out in the street or whatever. So you got to know when to turn it on and off. And then for the radio, for the executive side, um, that's that's the easier point for me. Because, you know, uh, programming stations, you know, being in charge, leadership, that's me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's me full hearted. So, um, and then over time, you just learn how to ride it. Facts. It just it just takes a minute. You learn how to deal with people on on. on Think about this though. I wanna uh and I wanna go back to CJ. Yeah. Uh have she ever asked to come work on a radio station with you? No. Why not? She just never <laughs> she did. She got the She, she just got never the, did. I think uh, I said something. I think, you know, we had a, a situation that happened in a while uh, in the very early beginnings where she did some stuff for me. Okay. And some of my old staffers, man, from you know, back in the day that that's not with me no more, but they were like jealous. Hmm. They had a and and it was like they had an issue with her doing a certain thing that I had her do, and it was on the air. And it was like, well, why can't one of us do it? And I'm like, well, because I needed it now, and I was at home when I recorded. Got a home studio, right? Yeah. So I recorded it. There. I needed to do it real quick, and went on the air. And man, it just turned into this ugly thing. Uh, and it was just one one promo. It wasn't even hmm. a bunch of stuff. Just and from that, we both just got turned off by it. Okay, was like, yeah, you know, we're we just going to leave it alone. Because it's not, that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, but she's, but we've always done different things and, you know, uh, her plays and different things like that. And it's funny you mentioned that too. We, we, we the, the eventually, the Femme Foolery Girls, uh, that's her comedy troupe, is her and uh, Crystal Wood and I mm -hmm. and um, Rhonda, they're going to, um, they're going to come on the show and hang out. And just cut up. So yeah, that's gonna be crazy. And shout out to Crystal with an eye too. I did the uh, cameo bubble show with her. Yeah, man. Oh, uh, last the other week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was tripping off a uh, uh, post. Well, your post, you posted it when y'all was talking about Puffy. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that was so funny. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And uh, that it was funny. It was. Yeah, it was. It, it was just so funny. But it was. And I want to talk about that end too. Like, how do the radio stations? How do y'all kind of stare away from? You have to talk about the topics, but but you don't want to tear down right. your people. Right. You know what I mean? How, how do you kind of fight through that? Because you got to, it's a radio station. We want to hear some tea, Kenny. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, 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 right. <laughs> we want to hear some tea, But man. you want to still kind of not look at, like, because every time you say anything about a black man, it's like another black man turning another black man down. So right, do you right. kind of shy away from those conversations? or I don't, man, because when I, I know that when I do it, my heart isn't to tear you down. Facts. My heart isn't to tear you down. This is what happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's going to make some jokes. Mm -hmm. Some other people are going to make Why some jokes. Why come Kenny Smooth can't make no jokes? I'm going to make a joke, too. It's, that's, right? Yeah. But but I'm not doing, I'm not going to tear you down yeah. in it. I'm not going to dip you in acid. But how are we, let you me know ask you a question, Kenny. This, how are we hold our own black men accountable to where when they're doing some and I'm just using Puffy right. for example not just saying Puffy but I'm right. I can use him he's in, he's in the media if you know a guy is treating people in a sad way and been doing it for years how are we holding them accountable when the when the upper people with them are not and that's 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 a uh, 
That's a curse word in our community, man. Accountability yeah. is a curse word. Like nobody wants to be held accountable for their BS. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so and then when you try to do it, they try to they try to juxtapose the language of tearing you down. Damn. And it's not tearing you down, Damn. dude. If we don't hold each other accountable, we don't get better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just that's just the bottom line. Um and so, you know, we, we have to we have to do a, a better job of that. Um but again, I, I said I always go back to that because somebody mentioned something like that to me before, like we're tearing down our people. And I'm like, no, you're not holding them accountable. accountable. Since you want to come to me and talk about me tearing them down, Damn. why don't you stop it by going and holding them accountable? Damn. And before, I won't have to say nothing. And then nothing. I won't have to say nothing since you, but because I'm I'm the easy target because you see me over here in Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the hard work is the accountability of these people. Right. So if you're going to hold them to this high regard, Make sure you hold them accountable too. And when you see them cutting up, and now you got all the social media, yeah. and you can see them cutting up. Yeah. Are you on their pages like, hey man, easy with that? Yeah. Or are you just sitting around letting them keep going? Yeah. Until, you know, eventually they do something to where they can't be let let alone anymore. And then you want to come in and hey, y'all need the help. You could have been and said some years ago. Said something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It work, it should work on both ends of the fence yeah. for those people that just, you know, have to try to police everybody. Mm-hmm. Are you doing the accountability side of this chastisement that you're doing to me Thanks. on on as uh, far as tearing them down, quote unquote? Uh I'm not gonna tear I'm not trying to tear nobody down, man. But uh and with Puffy, man, I mean he still got he ain't even been to a court date. He don't have a court date. He hasn't been charged formally yeah. with anything. But if any of you guys knew the feds, you know, they don't you know, if they, they, don't if come, they come in no your reason. house, Ooh. that's just the first phase of the, the indictments are coming. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everybody don't forget, the Fed, the Fed prosecutor is 93% conviction rate. 93%. 93. Like 93, like 93 out of 1,000. 93, like 93 out of 100. Out of 100. <laughs> out of 100. You know what I'm saying? If you shot 93% of your free throws, you in the Hall of Fame. You're- you know you the one of the best that ever done it. You one of the best that ever done it. Well, you probably the best that ever done it. You know. What I'm so saying? you know, I don't know if that means anything uh, to them or not. Hell, you know what? Because we know we personally know in the hip hop industry somebody that was on the seven percent. Yeah, Irv Gotti. Mm. They had him under federal indictment. Irv Gotti beat the case. Yeah. So it's not like it's not possible for Diddy too. But man, they it, they got a lot of stuff, man. So we'll see what happens. Man. Um. How have Nashville treated you since you've been here in your in your Nashville has been fair to me, man. Nashville has, like I said when we started, man. Nashville helped me, you know, go into my grown man, mm-hmm. uh, and with my with my daughter and with life and divorce and. Did she you know, still everything. bring her friend down here when they come on vacation and spending all your money. Oh man, yeah, man, <laughs> all that craziness, <laughs> man, all and of that craziness. Let's they talk about. Now. Real quick, because uh, and we we got time, but um, I want to talk about this TSU thing. Okay, like Kenny, for us on the outside looking in, and we know you, you know, what I mean, and like I said, you got a big voice in this. How do these people owe TSU all this money, and they know they owe them, and it's like nothing we can do but complain. Yeah, man, we uh, I was on Roland Martin's uh, yeah, I was on podcast yeah. about a week ago. Shout that, shout out to Roland Martin. Rolling. Um. It's 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 a time tested thing that has happened with us in other aspects yeah. of just being uh, you know, black Americans. Yeah, yeah. Where you have faulted me, I'm showing you that you faulted me, huh? and then you pivot into something else so that you don't have to deal with the hurt that you the accountability the thing. accountability thing. Again. Okay. So you try to pivot away from what was happening. That's been with black farmers. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? That's been, you can go on with education and health. Yeah. You can go through almost every aspect of just life and see that, hey, we've been wronged here. Here's the proof that you wronged us. How you going to fix it? Well, uh, let me get back with you. And then when they get back with you, they change everything, try to shell game everything so that they don't have to fix it. But I think, I think the first order of business for the new board has to be back onto that money. Are you going to get this money into the school? But you got to think for us, um, outside looking in, because we're all the guys. We're always outside looking in. We might see you on the stage with the with the governor or mm-hmm. the or the mayor or something. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, 
And these guys are quote unquote in eyesight I, I control of Tennessee and Nashville. And if if we're in contact with the governor and the governor sees it's wrong and not actually coming out saying, hey, we need to get our two billion, like, how are we supposed to react? You know what I'm saying? Like, and we know they know that um what's going on with TSU is wrong and they're right in people for banging their hand tips like yours. Um are we holding them accountable like we should? That's but well, that's what I'm saying. You, really now that that question kind of goes into the wind because they dissolved the board. Okay. Mm. So now we just got to deal with the new board. And then the crazy thing about the new board is them people were brought in by the governor. Right? Yeah. So I mean imagine man if if I if I owed you a hundred thousand dollars, okay, right, yeah, and then it was a it was a person that was supposed to make sure that you got paid the money and got fired, right? <laughs> or I or I was the person that was in charge of getting rid of the person <laughs> that knew that I owed you the money and then brought in somebody new. <laughs> That's what they just did. Wow! And so now we going, oh, well, you now we got to go through this. A hey, new dude, you do know about that hundred racks. <laughs> You know about the hundred racks, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Well, let me show you. And now I got to go through the whole, whole thing. process again. And then, how about this? That's my guy that I brought in to tell you about the money I owe you. That's my dude. So how much? How long is it going to take, take before we finally get to the conversation? Or how much is he going to shave off or try to get me to agree that look, man, it's fifty thousand? Yeah. No, it's a hundred. It's a hundred. You know, I need the whole thing. I don't want 50. <laughs> I need all of it. Because so, if you had given me, the, the bottom line is if you had given TSU the money that they were supposed to have, we wouldn't be having these conversations. Are they trying to give them something lesser than that? That hasn't, I haven't heard okay. anything like yeah, that. Okay. But I'm imagining, bro, like, that's a hell of a jack move that just went down. Yeah. So I'm imagining they like, hey, you're going to have to deal with this. And these are probably the parameters of the conversations we're willing to deal with. But we don't want to get them the whole two mi- two billion. Mm. And I'm like, dude, the two That's what you dude, owe us. Two billion dollars at TSU is can you imagine how pretty that campus is? Can you see Hell Stadium? It's probably the best stadium in the city. I made a joke. <laughs> I made a with joke. Two billion. I made a joke about TSU and and, and I, I I was joking, but I wasn't playing. Right. I walked in there and I said it looked like a East Side High. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm lit. just and not on no like it was the air was out, it was hot in there, and I'm like, man, um, and it goes back to our education, educating our black men and black women. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's another tactic from the system just to kind of make sure we're not getting educated to the top as we can? I mean, anything is possible. Okay, you know, um. But I, I, I do know this, is that what we hit, I'm dealing with what we do know. If you had to $2 billion, I can see the then case. it's not no hot buildings. The water runs. Yeah. The, the laboratories work. The, the science center has the stuff that they need to work. The computer labs are up. Everything is working because yeah. I got $2 billion Dollars. to work with. So can you really say that I'm mismanaging the school when you don't give me the tools to manage the school with? Isn't some of this your fault too? You can't just blame it all on the administrators and the people that run the school when you haven't done your part as well. You know, and then I think, you know, man, black people are so amazing, man. You know, we going to do it even without it. We'll make a way. That's what I was going to just, you just, you, know you, you just we make a way. We've been made a way. Just we to made be honest, it to keep the doors open. Yeah. And you, you, and you, and I'm doing it without everything. And I'm still got the doors open and the students are still here and we're still having homecoming and we're still having the activities that we have. They made a way. Yeah. But the th- man, man, but I think some other folks, man, are so used to seeing us make a way. They just, they just keep taking from you. It's just like, do it. don't worry about it. Take the money. Give it to uh, UUT. Give it to ETSU. Give it to all these other state-run yeah. organizations, and and then you go to their campuses, and they're beautiful. Oh my goodness, they're beautiful. Look yeah. like a, a college. Look, Man, look, look, look like a resort. When I went to MTSU's, um, you ever seen their media room? Mm-mm. Oh my god, they have top-notch everything in there: studio equipment, 
every doll you ever thought of, every piece of damn mm. Mac computers, all of it. So no wonder they pumping out platinum uh, producers yeah, up out of no there. No wonder people want to go there. Uh, yeah, I mean, they done, done three or four of them. They all coming out of MTSU because they go in there and they, they work the facility, on they the facilities it. and the top-notch industry standard stuff. So here come Take Keith. Take Keith, I see why you out there. Here come Take Keith. Okay, Take Keith. We yeah, got I it see now. how you got it. We got, you know I, I, cool. I see how you got it. <laughs> You know, but, you know, the crazy real. part, you know, we got, and we got a young guy too, man. Um, we got some cats out of uh, TSU that have done it too. That have come out of the, out of the TSU ranks. Mm -hmm. But man, I, honestly, I think it should be more coming up out of TSU. They so raw and gritty. That, or, that talent is in that room, man. They don't have the tools. When you, when, when you on, on, on the station, cause Kenny Smooth will get mad at you mm. and really speak out. Uh, does it ever come a time when you think like, Am I supposed to be speaking up for Nashville like this? You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm, man. Or I, it just, it just. My, my, you know, my, uh, my dad was like, man, one day you'll get a, an opportunity to be the voice or, or, or be a leader. He said, be that. Be that. Be that. You know what I'm saying? And you, you know, just, I, I try to, I try to keep an inbounds. I try not to offend anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and I, and I, dude, I have to really be at home practicing my words yeah. you know what i'm saying because i just don't turn on the mic and just rah because i'd have been yeah. in trouble a long time oh, ago. most definitely you know what i'm saying um but i get it to where i can get it centered to where even if i'm talking about you you just gotta go well yeah maybe i could have did that better or that's how you want it I to mean, come I, I wish he wouldn't have said that yeah. but all it's right the truth. Then, yeah. you know it was the truth i didn't embellish facts you know i didn't uh try to make you try to demonize you this is what you did we don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I, um, man, I want to commend you on um, when we was talking about, we was all about the 50s. Everybody was mad about the 50th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, all, we, man, we, yeah, yeah. We yeah. wasn't mad at Kitty's Boo. We was mad at the situation. Right. But I want to commend you when um, they mouth spoke out. Mm -hmm. And shout out to their mouth. It's my guy. Mm -hmm. But it was Kenny Boo said. Kenny Boo said, I'll pull up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On some real man type of yeah man and, and and for me see that's the type of stuff that i like right you didn't go on the radio and say hey f nashville this that this that you was like hey and then when you pull it up a person can understand like this is what it is right you know what i'm saying and we talked it and out and you didn't have to do that no that was a saturday night man i was at home chilling but you know i knew he you know goes down to that spot so i just went down there man and just chopped it up with him you know um and so that's, but I, I'm for me and that anybody that you know, listens to this or whatever, if there's a thing where I may have you know, graded your sensibilities or, or ticked you off, or you think I'm doing something not cool, just reach out to me, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just as quick as you got on that, that Facebook and Instagram and rattled off whatever you wanted to rattle off, you could have put an at Kenny Smooth in there. Or you could have went into my yeah, inbox. You know what I'm saying? I promise you what you think it is is not. Yeah. You only got a half cock answer. And I got all, the whole answer because it's facts. about me. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? And then I would have told you this is what, what mm -hmm. it is. Blah, blah, blah. But some people, man, you know, and I, I'm not saying that that's Nate Miles thing, mm -hmm. but sometimes people want to be seen. And what better way to be seen than, than to talk about me? somebody. That everybody oh, knows, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, right. and then at me and all this stuff, and I'm like, dude, I'm a vice president of you know the third largest media company in the world, dude. I'm not going to battle back and forth with you on on Facebook right. like when like we go to junior high school or something. I'm not an eighth grader, yeah. you know what I'm saying, so I'm not good. I can't afford to be in that space. I don't even have you don't even got time to be in that space. I don't. I, don't, even I have mean, time. I don't, a lot of people don't. You know what I mean? But but, but I, I do feel that if there is you know, uh, angst or whatever, or anger about something that I should at least try to address it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to, uh, get, I'm not going to give him no more stage than what he deserves. Yeah. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying I'm not going to be like, Oh, y'all coming up next. We're going to interview, you know, this person that was talking crazy about me on the radio. Ah, we ain't oh, no, you don't, you don't get to go to a bigger stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to, I'm going to keep it where it was. Me do nothing with my show. This is my show and I control this nah, show. Now, nah. if I decide to bring you on or something, if I felt it was in the wheel of God, what I'm trying to yeah, do yeah, is yeah. it, it, another thing, but just other than you controlling that now. Nah, because only, only it was, it, you know, I tell people about social media. Social media is microcasting. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a small group of people that you're dealing with, you know, maybe at a time, a thousand here, 
blah, blah, blah. The radio was broadcasting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to broadcast a microcast, microcast situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to make it even more microcast by coming to you in a, in a space with even less people there than that so we can deal with this thing and then move on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm not really... I'm not really with that, man. You know, it's stupid. It's a, um, a real boss know how to talk it out without getting, um, I always say you really can't get mad. You know what I'm saying? The position you in, you can be mad. The Bible say uh, be angry, but don't, but don't sin. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that. Like, I, you can be mad, but don't do nothing nothing to hurt the public. You know what I'm saying? Don't oh, use your, I, I like you because you ain't never used this mic to attack. You know no. what I'm saying? And you has used it. You you don't use this mic to uplift. And I know a million people that ha- has been on their radio station promoting their food and their business and this and that. And no matter what you say about Kenny Smoothie, if you, if you go check the background of that, you might appreciate them. Right, man. You, you know, it couldn't be nothing but that because I promise you, I'm not. I, not that I agree doing... with everything. No, no. It, and I, and I ain't I'm... gonna say that. But no. I, and I, and I, I told people about Barack Obama. I don't agree with everything he say. Yeah. We, me and him get a nice little argument if we got in front of each other. I got stuff to argue about. I got stuff to argue with you about. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but I, I, but I agree with your heart. I agree with, you know, who I think that you mean well. It's you know that 90-some yeah. percent thing we talking about again. Um, I, I agree with 90%. I have, seen, I have never seen I have never seen you do no BS. I mean, you right. might you might say something that I don't agree with. That right. don't make me an enemy of. That's why they don't think it don't make me an enemy of you because you say something that I don't agree with. I right. just got a different outlook on it, and let's right. and let's 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 agree to disagree. You know, and then guess what? Sometimes I don't know what your thing is, right? And so that's why it's good to talk. Right. And you know, I tell people all the time, man. You know, I reserve the right to pivot. You know, what I'm saying, you know. The internet makes you think that it's a zero sum answer to everything. Yeah, and it's not. Or it's just sometimes one it's two answers. It's, it's, two, it could be two rights. Sometimes you know. Some listen. Is it? Is it? Is that you know? Uh, like I use Trump for an example. Yeah, it's two answers. He did it, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know he need to pay his pay his, his due. But it's like we know it. Yeah. You know right. So I'm not, you know, so it's like people always thinking, well, no, if you say that he, like, well, we're police officers. You know what I'm saying? Well, this man shot this man and he didn't have no gun. And this police is bad. This police officer, not all of them. No, just this, just one. this one. Let's deal with him. But it's like, why do y'all, why we got to take the whole brand? Of this situation and put it on all police. Oh, yeah, fact. I don't agree fact, with that. Fact. Not, not at all. I, I'm not going there. <laughs> I want here. the police to be patrolling <laughs> my neighborhood. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, the I'm hell? a civilian, you know now, I'm and I'm liable to call the police on you now. You know, what I'm you know what I'm so, I might have wouldn't did that back in the day, but I want the police to protect our kids. I'm These like, dude, schools and stuff like that. We right. got kids out here. There's no zero sum. You know what I'm saying? It's like we got to get out of that. But the internet does that to you. The internet makes you want to win or lose. Yeah. Like, so I'm arguing and I'm arguing and only I'm right. And this is my point. Yeah. And I'm like, but bro, is it, there's a part of that that's wrong. And then it's a part of it that's right. Yes. And you should be able to accept that, but they don't. It's like, you got to beat them in the ground and make my point. Yeah. And so that's why I don't argue with people on the internet. <laughs> not me. Look, man. <laughs> um, Kenny, I can't, I, I didn't bring you here for nothing but to show you the love that you deserve. Like, I appreciate um, that, man. I know plenty of women, plenty of men, food, clothes, just all type of business that actually trust you to put it out there and you have done it at 100%. Not everybody. Right. You ain't, you can, nobody can help everybody. And um, so I want to thank you coming from me. Because I understand how hard your job is. Uh-huh. I, I understand, like I said, uh, uh, shout out to Dola White and Scooby for always inviting me in the radio station. That's to what's up. They, they, they told me coming, they were like, look, man, this is how this stuff run. This, that. And it was, and I tell people all the time, it ain't as easy as they think. But um, the stuff what you're doing is on a major level and helping people because, you know, if you go to the radio station, you feel like, came your Bobo, shout out to Kim your Bobo. Yeah, you man. You know what I'm saying? was all right. And, yeah, and so, uh, man, I, I appreciate you for coming. I just, just give us something. That's your camera. Give right, us right. something to, to, to go out on. Encourage us on something. 
<laughs> you know, you know, what I'm um, <laughs> you know, it, I think you know people should know that when you out here, man, you I know you're trying to do your thing, and you want to push forward and you want to get it done. You know, um, I got a bunch of little sayings I always use, man. But you know, one of them is that sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear eats you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it happens. It happens. You know what I'm saying? But you, you, you gotta, you just keep pushing at it, man. I mean, the problem, the thing is, man, is that into over the next ten years, there'll be a new Beyonce, there'll be a new uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Mm-hmm. The, the, over the next ten to fifteen years, that thing is coming. Yeah. And that little girl is walking around out here right now about three or four years old. Right. You know what I'm saying? And she's she's already born. Yeah, to do it. But it's like, how? what's going to make that little girl, because you got a bunch of them, they all can sing. Yeah. And they all can rap, and they look cute, mm-hmm. and they're great. But what pushes them to the Beyonce level? Not quitting. Ooh. That's it. Because it's it's that thing is going to be there. Ooh. And somebody's going to grab the baton. And the only reason you won't is because you quit. Mm. You just can't quit. Because... The, the whole thing, the race is about those who just, it's not that you're probably even the best. Yeah. Like, Michael Jordan is not the best yeah. basketball player in the world. Yeah. We never seen him because he probably. Kobe Bryant is. Because he, he was in prison. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ooh. He was in prison. Oh, that's, that's, that's real. You know, like, just real talk. You, you, you don't know whether. Dude, I've seen some ballers, man, going up in Jersey. I'm like, sick. And, but they were knuckleheads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so to get themselves in trouble, probably got killed on the street, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but you different things happen to where you get X'd out or you're not in the in the running. But if you just keep going, <laughs> you'll get there. And I and then guess what? If you don't if you don't get there, the place you're gonna land up it ain't ain't that bad neither. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Look, that place ain't that bad neither. Steve Harvey said this before we go, mm-hmm. and um, and you're listening to somebody that didn't quit. And, no doubt. And, and it's still not quitting. But uh, Steve Harvey said this before we go. He said, my goal might be 250000 Your goal might be twenty five. Mm-hmm. You hit your goal, twenty five. I didn't hit mine. I hit mine. I, mine was two fifty. I hit 200 I still did more than you. If you're alive, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>